So before I pull the battery out of the truck for the winter, I figured I'd probably show you guys what I have for a setup here for boondocking power. Um, this panel here I made, custom to fit into this pocket. You've probably seen it in other videos and caught a glimpse of it. Uh, but basically I got uh, a cigarette lighter adapter, USB plugs here, uh, master on off, and remote on off for my inverter. This is a SAE style plug. Uh, it's the input for the solar panel. So basically I got uh, uh, MC4 connectors which are typical for uh, most solar panels. This connects to the, the panel itself and then this is the input goes into here and is wired into the charge controller. Uh, this is 10 feet in length so I could either leave the solar panel mounted on the roof rack or pull it off and mount it on the ground get better positioning with the sun um, uh, the battery I use is a Renogy 50 amp hour uh, lithium uh, lithium iron phosphate chemistry which is uh, pretty pretty standard nowadays uh, it's stable it's safe so basically I got a direct master ground connected to the, the console here uh, the positive output is fused as close as possible to the the battery and the source uh, I got a main main disconnect here all the outputs from the battery run through this and through the fuse obviously so into the inverter uh, fuse connection over into the auxiliary panel on the side there and then the in and out runs through here as well from the charge controller a thousand watt pure sign inverter I bought this used off of Kijiji uh, a thousand watts is is way more than I'll ever need uh, I run an extension cord out of it and I can pull this out of the back of the truck if I need to uh, this is a Renogy dual input charge controller uh, 30 amp capacity uh, so basically yeah it'll take solar input here and then it takes an input from the alternator from the truck so when the truck is running uh, this will this will charge the battery off the alternator uh, if you have the solar and the alternator connected it'll it'll draw 15 amps off of both for a total of 30 amps however if your solar is only drawing 2 amps your alternator is still only going to put out 15 amps so if you disconnect the solar and just run the alternator you get a full 30 amps uh, the charge controller comes with a Bluetooth controller uh, you can connect to it with your phone through Bluetooth and it'll give you the state of charge uh, it'll give you what kind of power inputs are coming in and out from what devices either the truck or the solar panel Other battery volts here amps house battery is this battery um, and then it'll give you your solar charging input amps. Keeps track of your total kilowatts generated. And it monitors the temperature of the charge controller and the battery itself. The battery, uh, there's all kinds of circuitry in here. There's a BMS a battery monitor system in here. So in like in freezing temperatures, for example, it'll prevent uh, charge current from going into the battery and destroying the battery. I won't let the battery over discharge if you were to have a, a severely large draw on it. But taking a look up front here. <clears throat> uh, basically, uh, the 10 amp connector is fused as close as possible to the source again. Um, it runs in through the firewall. This wire here is for the charge controller. It's needed to sense when the vehicle is on or off because the the Bronco has a, what's known as a smart alternator. Um, it'll only send a charge current to the truck battery when it's needed, switching off and on. Uh, it's more efficient this way. You save gas. Um, but because of that, 
uh, the charge controller needs to know when the vehicle is actually running. So this is just tapped into uh, ignition fuse output in here. So whenever the truck is running, it'll send a voltage to the charge controller. Uh, one of the problems I found with my setup, uh, when I disconnect the power here from the battery, uh, the unit still draws current from the truck battery. So it's always on. So instead of a fuse up front on the lead, I'm probably gonna go with a circuit breaker so I can switch it off and on like this. Um, in the meantime, I'll, I'll leave this powered up so the unit is actually drawing power from this instead of the truck battery. So I don't wake up one morning and I have a dead truck battery I'm not able to start. In standby mode like it is, uh, it only draws I think 80 or 120 milliamp hours. So probably less than an amp and a half a day. So you could leave it parked for a month and, and probably still not fully discharge this battery. Um, I'm daily driving mine, so that's that's not a big concern. But my camping season's over for the summer, so there's no reason to keep this in the truck. So that's basically that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And we'll see you in the next episode. There's one other thing I forgot to mention about the battery. Uh, the lithium iron phosphate basically has the same usable capacity as a 100 amp hour uh, lead acid or AGM or flooded battery basically uh something you'd see in your truck right the thing about the lithium iron phosphate is you can use pretty much all that 50 amp hours that the battery has to offer uh in a lead acid battery uh say 100 amp hour lead acid if you discharge past 50 amp hours or half the rate of capacity you're you're starting to do damage to the battery so you keep doing this repeatedly and your lead at battery will be junk before you know it. Uh, like lithium iron phosphate, you just keep running it down, bring it back up. Uh, these probably got 500 or a thousand usable charge cycles in them. I think this is probably like physically half the size of what a uh, hundred amp hour lead acid would be. And this thing weighs only about seven and a half pounds maybe. Or a lead acid you're, you're probably looking at 30 pounds 25 30 pounds so they are more expensive than a lead acid or a flooded battery but i think in the long run uh you're you're ahead of the game for sure